In this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, invert binary tree. And this question, if it isn't the most popular binary tree question, it's definitely top five. It's a very popular binary tree question. And for good reason. It's a great way to learn. There's no rules. You can do whatever you want to in this question. There's no specific traversal method that you have to worry about. There's no complicated logic. It's literally just traverse using any traversal that you want to and swap using any method of swapping. We'll talk about swaps here in a second. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So if we want to invert a binary tree, basically inverting a binary tree just means this, mirror it down the middle, so mirror it down the root, and then swap all of the nodes on the left side with all of the nodes on the right side. So the top node, the root node, isn't going to get swapped or mirrored because it's the root node and it's what we use to mirror. But all of these nodes below it, so two and seven now becomes seven and two. One and three is on the other side and it becomes three and one. And six and nine is on the other side and it becomes nine and six. But we're going to use pre-order traversal. And you can use any type of traversal that you want to. Any type of traversal will work on this problem. So with pre-order traversal, we're going to be using recursion. And I've got the recursive code right here. And we're going to walk through it step by step. So... We're going to start at the root node. We pass in the root node and we're going to swap before we do any traversing because this is a pre-order traversal. Special emphasis on the word pre because the swap is going to come before we do any recursion. Very important point. So when we swap, the only thing that we do is we swap the children below the node that we are at. And when we do that, we'll take our two and our seven here and it will now become seven and two. And when we do the swap, another peculiar thing is going to happen. And you don't actually do this. This just kind of happens on its own when you swap the seven and the two. The one and the three are going to be swapped over to the right side because they were attached to that seven and you don't need to worry about that that's just going to kind of happen on its own when you swap these two nodes so now that we're done with our swap we can finally get to the good part we can finally recurse and we're going to recurse to the left node and when we do that same exact process because this is going to execute within itself this is recursion so we're going back to the swap and guess what we're going to swap these two nodes below it so Six, nine is now going to become nine, six. And we're going to recurse again. We're going to recurse down the tree, but there's no nodes below it. So there's no swapping. Also, we're going to recurse to the right node. There's no nodes below it. So we don't have to do any swapping. The recursion is going to go back up the stack. And then what's going to happen is we're going to recurse down this side of the tree. So we're going to recurse to this node. And what's going to happen is we're going to swap. So we're going to swap the two nodes below. So now this is going to be three. This is going to be one. And the same recursive process is going to start. It's going to go down the tree. There's nothing below it. There's no nodes to swap below it. So we're going to go back up. Then we're going to go to the rightmost node. Same thing. No nodes below it. Finally, our traversal is done. Let's go ahead. Let's hop into IntelliJ and let's code this. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the first thing that I'm going to do is create the tree node. You don't have to create the tree node if you don't want to, but I'm going to create it because I think it's a good learning experience and it helps you tell what's going on inside of these nodes. So we're going to have a val, we're going to have a uh, left and right self-referencing uh, type for the nodes. And what we're going to have is an empty constructor. We'll also have a constructor that's going to take in the val and we'll say this dot val is equal to val. And also, let's see here, we're going to create a constructor that's going to take in the left and the right tree nodes. I'm gonna bring this down, this is kind of long, and I'm going to say this dot val, this dot left, and this dot right. 
looking great. So let's go ahead, create a class to house our algorithm. I'm going to uh, call this solution. And within the solution file here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a method. This is going to be public. It's going to return a tree node and we're going to call this invert tree. It's going to take in a tree node. So we're going to solve this with recursion and we're going to need a base case. First things first, we have to have our base case. And what's going to happen is if the root is equal to null, we're going to return null and that's going to signify we're at the bottom of the tree. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the swap. Now, this may look a little complex, but this is just standard swap. Whenever you need to do a swap, you have to do this. And I'll explain it here in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap the root left with the root right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to swap the root right with the root left. But we have to use this thing called a temp. Why do we have to use a temp? Well, we have to use a temp because watch this. When we do the swap, one of the nodes has to be swapped. So we're gonna say we're gonna say the root left is going to go to the root right. And when we do that, it it goes two. And you would think that that's perfectly fine and that we could just you know bring the seven over. But notice that when we swap the two with the two, there's two twos there, and the seven disappears. So once the seven disappears, it's gone forever, and we can't really do anything with it. So what we do is we store it in a temp or a temp data object right here. We store it in a temp. We store the root left in a temp so that when we do the switch, we don't inadvertently destroy the root left. So that's the, re that's the swap. That's how swaps work. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do our recursion. We're going to pass in our root left and we're going to pass in our root right and we're going to return the root. And that's pretty much it. So let's grab all this. We're going to toss this into leak code and we are going to see if this works. And when we bring this over and we put the code into the editor, going to move this up, make it look good. And our test case are accepted. And let's see our runtime. Our runtime is going to be N and our time or our space complexity is going to be N as well too. So that is the recursive solution. Now let's tackle the iterative solution. So the recursive version that we just did, it's a little bit too easy by Google standards. What Google or any other type of top tech company is going to do is they're going to say, hey, recursion, that's a little too easy. Why don't you do the iterative version? So that's what we're going to do. But thankfully for us, the iterative version really isn't that much different. Instead of using the computer stack, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own stack and the process is going to look exactly the same. But before we do anything else, this is specific to iterative algorithms. We're going to go ahead, we're going to place our node on the stack, the root node, we're going to place it on the stack before we do anything else. Then what we're going to do, we're gonna pop that node off. And when we pop the node off, that means that we are currently at that node. We're gonna repeat the same exact process. We're going to swap the children and only these children. So we'll swap seven and two. Then we're going to go ahead, we're going to swap these nodes here, one and three. But remember that that's automatically going to happen and you don't actually have to swap these nodes. It's just going to be a byproduct of switching the nodes directly under the root, the one that we are currently at. Okay, so we're pretty much done, but before we can continue traversing, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to add our nodes to the stack. So we add our nodes to the stack. And what the stack does, all the stack does is it just remembers where we need to go. Previously, the computer stack used to do this, but now our own stack does it. So where do we need to go now? We need to go to seven. So we pop seven off the stack. And when we pop seven off the stack, that means we need to go to seven. So we go to seven and we do the exact same thing. We swap the children nodes. So we're going to swap six with nine. So it's going to be nine and six now. 
And before we do anything else, before we continue moving, we need to go ahead and we need to add these notes. So I'm going to add six. I'm going to add nine. When we add six and nine, it remembers where we need to go. So we're going to go to nine next. Nine doesn't have any nodes, so we can just go ahead, take this off, pop it off the stack. Same thing for six. Six, there's no nodes below it, nothing to do here. So what we're gonna do is we're now going to go to two. And this process is going to repeat. Two is now off the stack. So what we're going to do, we're going to swap these nodes. But before we move on, we're gonna go ahead, add our nodes to the stack. And not a lot's going to happen because there's no other uh, children below this one. So three, pop three off, we, we go to three. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We pop uh, the one node off, we go to one, that is it. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code it. So we are inside of IntelliJ and first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all this recursive code and I'm going to keep the invert tree method. So before anything else, we're going to check if the root is equal to null. And this isn't actually a base case, this is more of just an edge case check. So let's go ahead and create our data structures. Uh, let's create a stack. This stack is going to contain all of our tree nodes. Let's go ahead and do the import. We'll call this stack, we'll say new stack. So here's the thing. This is a crazy, this is unique to this problem. This isn't, you can't do this with everything, but you could just replace all of this with a Q. Wouldn't make any difference. Pretty crazy, huh? So. Like I said on the whiteboard, before we do anything else, and this is with every single problem, we're going to have to push that root onto the stack or the queue, whatever you're using. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to create a while loop. And while the stack has elements in it, we need to keep going. If there's stuff on the stack, that means that we still need to keep iterating. And while we're iterating, while we're going up and down this tree using the stack, we're going to pop off the stack. So next, before we actually go, or before we actually add anything to this stack, before we actually continue traversing, we need to do what we came here for. What did we come here for? We came here to do a swap. So we'll say node.left, so, and we'll temp that, and we'll do the actual swap from the right to the left. And then here we're going to do the right and we're going to swap it with the temp. And here's where we're going to actually push the nodes on the stack. So if node.left is not equal to null, we're going to go ahead and push on the stack. And if node.right is not equal to null, we're going to push it on the stack as well too. And that basically means if there's children below us, push it onto the stack. And then we're going to return the root. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead. Let's take all this code right here. Let's toss it in leak code, see what we get. So I'm going to get out full screen here and let me go ahead, bring over leak code. I'm going to bring this over, go ahead, toss that code in, bring this over a little bit, just like that. I'm going to hit the run button. We are accepted. Let's check our submit. Let's check our time complexity. Our time complexity is going to be good. Time complexity is N. And our memory is N as well too. Congratulations. You have passed the interview. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.